So now we're going to do problem solving with sine function, okay? And we're going to take kind of a left-hand curve here to start, something we have not done at all, we haven't even thought of. And it's using the sine function as an equation to solve for something, okay? So given the equation here, right, and we'll apply this later to a... Uh, to an actual situation. I'll do attendance in a little bit, Hicks. Um, is determine the value of the function, 210 degrees. So essentially that's saying 210 is my x. So what's the value, like if we were to graph this, if I were to, to make a graph of this, perfect. What's my value at 210 degrees. So to find that, all we're going to do is substitute that into the equation. Okay, so we get 3 sine bracket, and this is where the x was before, we put 210 in there. So this is f of x equals 3 sine, and that is 150. My writing is really off today, more than usual. So, the way we find the answer to that is we have to plug that, we just use our calculator to do this part. Let me get my calculator out. So the way I would write this in, I usually do the sine first, although you could go, I usually do sine first. Sine 150 equals times 3 plus 7 equals 8.5 is my answer. Okay? So hypothetically, that's not, that's not f of x. That's the function at 210. Does anyone want me to do that with a um, Apple calculator. Do you guys want me to do the same? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me get an Apple calculator over. So the way I do that in Apple Calculator, I go 150, press the sign button, then times it by 3, equals uh, plus 7. I wonder if this would work too. What if I go 3 times 150 sine plus 7 equals 8.5? So I could write it in the same way as well. Okay? Does everyone understand how to do that one? No. Which part don't you understand? The substituting it in or the calculation part? So, All right. so what it's asking here is this is my my function, right? This is my equation. And x here is in degrees, remember? Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180, and so on, right? So it's telling you along this x, when is, what's my result, what's my answer when I'm at 210 degrees? So we take that 210 and substitute it into the equation for x. Well, here we did 210 minus 60, because that was in there. What kind of calculator do you have? Okay. Well, relax. For this one, I would do sine 150 first. So I go 150, press my sine, sine button, then multiply it by 3, press equals, and then plus 7. Okay. 
We'll do another one so we can get more practice. Now here's the interesting part is we're going to put, so determine the first instant the function is 8.5. So what's my equation again? We have f of x equals 3 sine x minus 60 plus 7. So this time, we're given the f of x. We're given the, the result. We're trying to find x. So this is, where's my mouse? 8.5 equals 3 sine bracket x minus 60 plus 7. Now we have to isolate for that x, which now comes into some sweet algebra. Okay. Uh, S A D. Oops. I have the right bed mass here again. That's a B. That's a sweet B. So remember, when we do, we're solving equations, we do bed mass backwards. Okay? You gonna try? All right, take her on. What do we do first? Good. So what do we do first? No. What do we move first here? Go this equation. The seven, right? Because we have an addition, so when it moves over, it becomes a subtraction. No, we can't substitute. We don't know x. We're solving for x. Okay. Uh, that's, we still have to do one more step before we get that. So we're right here now. What do we have to move next? The, get rid of 3. So if we move it over, it becomes a divide, right? And the other way to think about it is if I divide this by, side by 3, I divide this side by 3, and 1.5 divided by 3 is 0 0.5. Yeah, but we would have just this part. Right? So now, thinking back to trig, how do we move that sign over? When we had this in trig, how do we get to the next line? What did the next line look like? Yeah. Over sine, very good. But another way to write that, if you remember, is sine to the negative 1, 0 0.5 equals x minus 60. You're 100% right. This here is the same as writing this. Good. And good job, Chris and Lago in chat. Now, that equals, we'll just, what is sine to the point? Negative. That equals 30. Okay. And our last step to get our x all by itself is what? So, you have a positive x here, so let's move this one. So it's going to be 30 plus or minus 60. Plus. Yep. So that tells me at 90 degrees in, right, at 90 degrees in, that's when the graph will be at 8.5. Okay? 
Now this could be like the equation for a roller coaster, right? We want to know what height we're going to be at 8.5 seconds into the ride. Oh, 8.5 seconds in, we're going to be at 90 height. Sorry, other, other way around. When are we going to be 8.5 meters above the ground? Well, hypothetically, in this case, 90 seconds in. That's a lot of math. That's right. a well, relax. But it could have been like this. What if it was a roller coaster went like this? And there's your 90 seconds. Oh, relax. <laughs> okay. So here's another way we can solve problems, right? We could do it algebraically, or we could do it graphically, okay? So here's a sketch of the depth of water at various times as a tide goes out, in and out, okay? So there's our sketch of our graph, of our time, okay? Oops. I plotted them already. I made a graph for you. Okay? That's what's on there, yeah. So depth is here. Depth is here and time is here. And this is hours. Like this is midnight. Midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and so on. Okay? Does that make sense, everybody? So the question we have here is, let's do this question first. Can we say what the period, amplitude, let's do period first. What's the period for this, for this graph? Remember, period is how long it takes it to complete one full rotation. So what's the period for this for this for this graph? Twelve what? Twelve hours. Good. Okay. What's my amplitude? And if we forget, we have. I guess I have to go back and uh, sine function notes. If we go back to sine function notes, it's in here, right? Amplitude and axis of a curve. So this is max minus min. Or what we can do is we can take, sometimes what I do is I take the lowest, right? That's five. This is what? What's well, 5.5? What's my highest point? 17.5? What's the difference between these two? Does that make sense for amplitude? Yes, no, maybe so. So I did max, max minus min divided by two. So my max is 17.5, which I look at right there. My minimum, so max is right there. My minimum is right there, right? So max minus min divided by 2, 17.5 minus 5.5 divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 equals 6. And I realize, as someone pointed out yesterday, my 6s look remarkably like Bs. I don't know how to make it better and if I follow through a little bit okay now what's my axis so I've got this one check 
check. What's my equation of the axis? If you remember that, yes. pardon? Uh, no. That's max plus min divided by 2. It is in last week's put it in this week's as well. It's also in when you go to get your culminating. It's in there as well. Okay. Okay, didn't need to know that. Yeah. Have fun. What's that? Eighteen twenty-three divided by two. Uh, Eleven point five. Okay. Uh, and then domain and range. I'm not too worried about it right now. We can do domain, right? Does this ever stop? No. No. Right? Um, you can say all times, correct? Your range, what's the high and the low? The high would be 17.5, and the low is 5.5. So you say in between 17.5 and 5.5 would be our, our range. This is stuff we did last week, correct? So this part should be a little bit of review. So now, here's my second question for you with this. Oh, let's see how it's the best to have this. Oops. Let's do this. Copy. I'm going to paste it right there. So, we could also use our graph <coughs> to estimate the depth at 10.30 a.m. Okay, so if we want to estimate the depth at 10.30 a.m., we go to about 10.30 here, go up, oh my god, why 10.30 shift so badly? Why is 10, there we go. Let's change, can I change that color? No, I can't. I'll leave it. Go to 10.30 a.m. We go there, and then we can just draw a line straight across to find our approximate depth. Now, if you, when you draw your graph out, it's going to be a lot easier than me messing with this thing. Uh, yeah, somewhere around there. Um, actually, a little bit higher. I want you to go straight. So that's what are we going up here at? Those are ones, aren't they? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So that'd be one, two. So that'd be at seven point something, you'd say. It's a little over seven. Six, seven. Oh. So about seven point something, seven point two ish. Right? <laughs> oh, I understand. You're, you're, you're splitting this up into a whole bunch of fives and then jump to ten. That's okay. But then we can also use the graph to estimate the time the water's at 16 meters. So what I could do for that is I could go to 16 meters and draw a nice straight line across. And right here and right here is when it's 16 meters. And then go down. So at about 4.30 and 7.30. Okay. 
4.30 a.m. and 7.30 a.m. Does that make sense to everyone what I'm doing here with the graph? Yes, no? And then you could do a little bit of, uh, oh, geez, crazy. extrapolation and say if the pattern continues, what's the water depth at 4 p.m.? Could anyone think of what the water depth is going to be at 4 p.m. for me and type it in chat? I'll zoom in on this for you. So I'm looking for the water depth at 4 p.m. Perfect. Good. Which Ben said 14.5. Yeah, around 14.5, 14 meters. Good. Right. And what you could do there, depending on what time. Now, this is super easy because it lines up perfectly, right? But if I asked you, like, let's use uh, army time and say, okay, what's the depth going to be at 1,800 hours, right? So if I ask for 1,800 hours, correct? You know this repeats. You say, okay, 12 plus blank equals 18. Well, 12 plus 6 is going to be 18. So I can just go down to where my 6 is here and look. All right. Let's do Oh good, I only put one of these on. No, I made I made you do this one. Okay. Here's what I want to do. Okay. I want to see who can draw this graph. Okay. And one of my most relive one of my most disappointing experiences in in uh, Fergus ever. I come from the county and from the country down in Ottawa Valley where we have nice big fairs. And I always went around the fairs so when my son was young we saw that the Fergus had a fair and thought oh we'll go to Fergus Fair. And I had a demolition derby which I thought oh good like our demolition derby back home is huge. Like maybe a hundred cars would enter. I thought my son would like to see Smuff smash around. Let's go to the Fergus Fair. The most disappointing thing ever, the, the demolition derby consisted of like five cars and they went like one on one, which is really boring. So here's what I want you to do. What fair did you go? Aberflow, interesting. Okay, here we go. Um, let's make this a. Uh, let's make that the diameter. Okay, so I want you to try to draw this out for me okay try to make and i want three cycles two, two full cycles of this okay okay i'm gonna bring up the padlet so i can see what people draw because i my gut tells me we're not great at this yet if that makes sense Just make a sketch. Like you can just go make something like this, and you can make up your numbers here and make up your time there. Are you supposed to draw in the well, you, you, no, you're drawing the distance off the ground. Sorry, I didn't. 
right? So this is supposed to represent distance above the ground, and this is time. <laughs> That's funny. Um, there's Would you guys like me to draw this one, then you post the next one? Um, I put it in chat. I can also put it... Let me make sure that's the right one. Oh, that's a big QR code. Uh, whoever put the first one in, I like it, but it's lacking time and distance. Time and height, I think. No name attached to it. Alright. Alright, so let, let me draw this out with you. Actually, shoot. It would have been easier with radi with radius. But I'm gonna go I'm going to go back to uh, radius here. Yeah, that's why I wrote radius the first time. Okay. I can draw both of them if you already did the first one. So, always draw the very start of it. Put a dot at the very start of it. Okay. You go to the world famous, um, the Ferris wheel and your cousin. You get on the Ferris wheel in the middle of the ride. The Ferris wheel has a radius of five meters. It takes four seconds to do a full rotation. Okay. So since I didn't give you how tall the radius is, uh, how tall it was, you could assume half. You get on halfway up the ride, which would be at five. Okay. The Ferris wheel does a, takes four seconds to complete a rotation. That is an exceptionally fast Ferris wheel, if you think about it. So it takes four seconds to go up and down and back to the middle. So it's going to end here. Does that make sense to everyone? We start here, right? This would be our start. And by the time we get back to where we were, is right here in four seconds. Because that's how long it takes to go all the way through. Is that a yes I understand that idea or no? I'm 100% lost. Okay. Now okay. what's going to happen halfway through, if you think about a Ferris wheel, right? I'm going to draw like my person on the Ferris wheel. This is where we start right here. Correct? And it takes four seconds to go all the way around. Correct? 
But when are we going to be over here? If it takes four seconds to go all the way around, when are we going to be the exact same height? After how many seconds? Two. So we can put another dot in the middle at two seconds. Right? Now this is up to your interpretation. But at one second, we're either going to be up as high as we could go, right? Or as low as we go, depending on how you, you picture the Ferris wheel going. Right? So realistically, after one second, we would be way up here. And then we come down, we'll be at ground level right there. So there would be one full rotation of our Ferris wheel. How many people were able to get something that looks like this? Now, when I gave you a diameter of this, if you did that one, it would just look like this. Like the only thing that would have changed would have been the, the height of your, the height there. Was anyone able to draw this? Yes or no? Ben got it, good. I see the pad that says Michael Jordan, that's Tanner. Have you put Michael Jordan up? No. Yeah, right. Now, I told you to write, you do two full cycles, which would mean you'd have to go once again. Now, if you got to kind of understand the routine, so one, two, three, four, we'd be ending there. So my middle would be there. I'd be up tall here. I'd be at the bottom there. So there's my two full cycles. Okay. Oh, you want the QR code again? Yeah, that's good. Ideas there. We'll do another one. I'll do another draw your own one here in a second. That's fine. All right. I'm not going to go through amplitude and things here. So let's use our graph here to estimate um, at 6.5 seconds how t where are we going to be? How high are we going to be? Could someone tell me that? At 6.5 seconds, at what height approximately are we going to be at? And we'll use the orange. What? Height, time. So my question is at 6.5 seconds, how high, what's our height? So if we go 6.5, we're about here, right, in time. So we go up, boom, 2.7. Now we round up to three. Okay, now here's my question for you. At what times are you at, um, at what times are you at eight meters above the ground? There's four answers to this. Besides this ride being dangerously unsafe. Good. Very good. 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 All right, here's another one to draw. Let's. Okay, here's the question. 
A car is driving down the road. The wheel has a diameter of 16 inches and is revolving 15 times per second. Okay? You're looking at one specific mark on the outside of the tire that starts on the ground. Draw the height and time of this situation showing five complete revolutions of the tire. Okay? I'll give you a hint by this is your starting point. And this graph numbering is way off. Do not pay attention to that graph numbering. Make your own. I'm going to make my own graph once we get to it. Okay. Sixteen inches is the diameter of the wheel. Okay. Alright. Well, let's break it down first. Okay. How long does it take to go through one rotation? It's fifteen times per minute. which equals 4. So it's going to take 4 seconds to go all the way around. Do you agree with me? Yes. So when's it going to hit the ground next? At 4 seconds. So that's going to be like my next dot. Right. Okay. Eight. That 8. Okay, you want to keep going? Perfect. We have, to, we have to do five complete cycles. So eight, then what? Twelve. Sixteen and twenty. Right? Okay. So you know it's going to hit each time there. Good. What's going to happen halfway between here? If it's at its... Good. But more specifically, where is that point on the tire? Um, so it'll be eight. Okay, no, but if you think about this here, let's go back to this diagram over here. Okay? You can post your guess, your, your correct answer in the um, Padlet, so I can take a look at it. So at zero seconds and at four seconds, it's here, correct? At the bottom. So yeah. where is it at two yes. seconds? It's at the top. Okay. How tall is your tire? So that means at two seconds, it's going to be up here. Yeah. No, it's going to be at it's hitting the ground again. No, it's going to hit the ground again at four. Yeah. Three seconds. Yep. Oh boy, that's a really bad line. Yeah, three. I'm really worried about Dylan that he has to run to the washroom. He's waiting that long. Where is it? I guess I could have. I didn't think my numbers were. I like. 
I guess I, these numbers do fit. I'll draw it down here then. So it rotates every four seconds. No, it, I like it because I can set my own numbers down here, right? These are my important numbers instead of using this scale. Does that make sense? Yes. Let's redo that line. These are getting worse as it goes. This is going to be the best one. Perfect. My ones up top look better. That looks really good. Whoever posted theirs in the in the Padlet. Thank you. Okay, how do we? Do, how many people were able to figure out this? To get a drawing that resembled this. The key points that I find when I do this is I I do the start like when it's in the same place. Right? When it's in the same place. No, we don't have attendance. I'm going to get to attendance yet. I already did my attendance online. When it's in the same place, and then I can just cut it in half and put that other point in. Like when uh, Cam and I talked through it, he said, okay, when's it at the bottom? It's at the bottom here, and it's at the bottom here. Right? Okay, when's it at the top? Well, it's at the top. In between there, it's going to be at the top, and then I figure out how far it is. Um, where'd you get the 16 come from? That's the diameter of our wheel. So since that's the diameter of our wheel, we know that's how high it's going to go. Okay. I can practice with people if they want to keep drawing stuff. We can bring up a new, uh, a new one. Okay. I'll tell you right now that one of your questions on your culminating today is just like something like this. Draw a graph of something. Identify, and all it is is draw the graph of something, identify the amplitude, Axis symmetry, curve, uh, your max min, and something else. There's five things you have to, oh, the period, right? That's one of your questions today. Is draw a graph, max, min, period, uh, amplitude, and axis. Just like that. Okay. So your homework is, I forgot to put homework out, so I did this morning. So if you go here, it should say Thursday block one homework. And there it is, okay? Um, I'm making the answer key as we go right now for this. So it's going to take me, you're going to ask where the answers are, and they're going to show up slowly, because I'm slowly going to uh, change this. Now, I will for you guys take away domain arrange um, and add in period there. I'll add in period and max and min. Okay, we'll take away domain arrange and do those things. So essentially, there's two questions here where you have to do some calculations, and three where I want you to draw the item out for me. Okay, um, and then we have our attendance to do. I'm interested in this question. Give me two seconds. I gotta make the QR code. Okay. 
and I'll give you, let's say 45 minutes to work on this. Oops. Wrong one. No, do not leave yet. I want you to do this first. One second. Yeah, put it in chat as well. I'll put it QR code people. But you're going to have to make sure I I will tell you right now, well, I already told you, learning how to draw those graphs is very important. Okay? Because there's a question just like it on your culminating this afternoon. Okay? Um, I asked you this question for the attendance because as I do recommendations for next steps, um, this will kind of come into contact with me. Uh, Malcolm, um, Nathan, I'll probably email you guys a question about this because there's a math course that I think I'll have to see if we run it. But um, I don't know. I'm not you. So you do bricklaying? Is there an apprenticeship for that? There might be a college program. No, bricklaying's kind of. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I worked bricklaying for half a summer. Got 10 tonight. 1045. Um, I got 10 tonight in my wrist that summer. Yeah, I go college because there might be some business courses. Kind of go. How'd you get in the bricklaying? That's a very odd thing. Okay. Okay. Interesting. No, you would lose money because you're buying at a high point. Okay, I gotta stop my recording. <laughs>